This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. This is Philosophy versus Improv, where two sages try to teach each other a thing or two, and maybe you, the audience, get something out of it as well. My name is Bill Arnett, an improv crazy person in a wooden cabin who knows a lot and writes a manifesto, who is excited about delving into philosophy. I mean, self-identifies as crazy? That's a little... I'm Mark Linsenmeyer, a, uh, someone who definitely does not self-identify as crazy as I run naked down the highway. Hi, I'm Zach Thompson. I'm more familiar with improv than philosophy, but I'll do what I can. <laughs> so yes, I, the philosopher, have brought a couple ideas that I'm going to pick from on the fly. And uh, Bill, our improv instructor, has brought a couple, I won't presume, but <laughs> he comes up with something and we'll try to teach them at each other. And, and Zach will help and we'll teach him. And at the end, Zach, you'll have to judge whether philosophy or improv, which one of those lessons has been most profound, most life-changing, which of the fields will survive. Because after tonight, one of them is going to not be taught in PhD level college courses anymore. I don't know which it's going to be. Zach, what is your deal? How do you know Bill? Bill and I met a long time ago at a place called the IO Theater. We were on separate teams, but certainly friendly. And then I got hired by a place called Comedy Sports Chicago, where Bill was an active ensemble member. We got closer through that and playing other shows like The Hot Carl, which was a late night uh, blue improv show and have drifted apart a little bit, Bill and I. Bill also was a teacher that I didn't take any instruction from. My wife took classes and coaching from Bill, so we've known each other pretty well. The last time we sat down together was in a scenario like this. We were both guests on a podcast called, a uh, spin-off podcast of a podcast called Hello from the Magic Tavern. Which about half of our guests have come in some way or other <laughs> from there. Now, Zach, I know you also do some acting around and, and other projects as well, including some semi-pro or amateur wrestling. Is that what level are we talking? I myself do not wrestle. Uh, I want to make that clear at the top because I did get a job because they thought I was going to, and, and I did for a events company here in Chicago, throw myself on the ground about a thousand times or get thrown on the ground rather. But I do announcing and interviewing for, it's professional wrestling. It's called independent professional wrestling. So it's not necessarily on television. You can find me on YouTube quite a bit around doing that kind of work, but um, not amateur. That, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not sure where, the, where those lines are. And just for anyone who's listening, one thing that I think we all associate with professional wrestling isn't just the wrestlers, but the announcers and managers and all of that around the wrestlers, uh, the Bobby Heenans and Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart's uh, out there. It's something we all forget, but that I think just as critical to professional wrestling and the whole show of it is that whole aspect, the other personalities. Well, my sales point to uh, promoters, I mean, I'm nobody's first choice, but I can make even the female wrestlers look very large because I am very small. So I got my first job in wrestling because they were like, oh, you do comedy. You're not afraid to speak on a microphone. Come do this thing with us. And I was like, well, OK. <laughs> but I mean, you're a wrestling fan, though. Or you're wrestling from way back. Yeah, you're, yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You know that world. Yeah. What would you describe your of all of the tropes to play? You mentioned we mentioned Bobby Heenan and Mr. Fuji. What do you think your favorite <laughs> <laughs> and, and all the announcers as well? What's your favorite character around all that to be bobby heenan's so great because he was i mean legitimately listened to him was so funny such a funny person and the little things he threw in so a lot of times i'll throw in and, and throw away lines that feel like they're just for me because <laughs> in a lot of ways they are the funny thing about bobby's um i've read both of his books and and some other books but one of them was a quote from nick bockwinkle who was an awa champion a long time ago and they were on the outside of the ring watching bobby get confronted by somebody and he goes He's the world champ, and he turns to somebody who's next to him as another wrestler and said, the sad thing is we're like the fourth most talented people in this ring because Bobby's in there. So <laughs> he could literally do it all before he hurt his neck. And, it, you know, it's a shame that he's passed on from us now. But I mean, but yes, if not commentary, there's something about that extra layer of character that adds a panache and a TV level to wrestling as we watch it. So, yeah, I would agree a thousand percent. So all this has made me think of a philosophy topic that was not actually on my list coming in here, which is <laughs> competitiveness. Okay. That a lot of folks who do ethics, they think about, what do we want to shoot for? What's our utopia? And it's, it's everybody getting along. You know, people, their misunderstandings. We don't see each other's point of view. That's the only reason we'd be in conflict. Mm -hmm. But it seems the idea of competitiveness, depending on how seriously you take it, and there, you know, this is one of the things I want to get into. Is there a place for competitiveness and sort of how mean does it have to be to fulfill that psychological need? 
if there is one, for competitiveness. Well, I think it kind of dovetails certainly with like the whole toxic masculinity thing that has been going around. And that's uh, certainly a phrase that's <laughs> been coined. And what's well, kind of funny, uh, we all know professional wrestling does have an aspect to it that some might feel is played up, we'll say, <laughs> that may not be 100% on the pure level. I don't know. I'm not going to say that. Uh, it sure looks real to me. Absolutely real to me. But allegedly, that is played up, which is a whole other wrinkle into this idea of competitiveness, I guess. More broadly speaking, somebody put out there recently, like almost no one has the ability anymore to understand somebody else's point of view without agreeing with it. And we're in this day and age, you know, the I'll do my own research day and age. And all that means is you Google until you find somebody who says what you want to hear. <laughs> and, and so in terms of the aggression, I think that's what comes off a lot. Like, you know, another headline leaps to mind is that reductus headline. That's like, I heard one thing and then I heard someone else say something else louder. <laughs> it's like, so I guess there's that boorishness or that need to be louder or right in all aspects, not just performance or, or wrestling, but I mean, like <laughs> pretty much anywhere you turn where somebody wants to be louder and writer. Although I guess there's also that bias that I've heard spelled out that, you know, whatever's the thing you hear first. So that's a, what's so wrong with misinformation because it doesn't matter if it gets corrected because the thing that even if the second one is louder, the first one is going to have more impact. I don't know if that's related to the sort of the home team advantage that, you know, if I know you first, you know, if Bill tells me right now about his beef with Zach, I mean, it sounds like Zach, you said you two grew apart. Your wife saw him in situations with, without you. I mean, it seems there's some serious beef here, and I'm, I've got to say I'm on Bill's side because I, I met him first. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. You knew him first. Yes, well, I mean, I, I won't be able to change your mind no matter how let I say it. Bill's a sweetheart, and, and there's no getting around that. But you did say before we started the recording, you thought maybe we'd met before. So maybe I knew you before Bill, and it's deeply subconscious. We're getting competitive now. Mark sure is. <laughs> So here's the funny thing. Like, I, this is a philosophy versus improv, right? And so, yes, there's competitiveness. In fact, I think when Bill and I first met, the group that I was associated with was working into this thing at IO Theater called the Cage Match. And we kind of cut our teeth trying to be funnier than another team in front of a live audience and doing pretty well for that. So there is a competitiveness. But the whole philosophy of improvisation. Wait, wait a second. Those have never been put in one word in one sentence before on the show. I'm wrapped. Keep going. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you work together to build something and your goal is to try and make the other person that you're on stage with look better than you. You're trying to like one up each other in a kind way. I don't know if that makes sense, but like treat everything that is said as a gift. And then I'm not sure. I, I just feel like that was too close to not bring up that philosophy, if you will. That's interesting. And again, kind of like professional wrestling. It's like we want to put on a good show. Everybody wants to put on a good show. And sometimes putting on a good show may run contrary to just an honest competition, a test of strength or wits or whatnot. A famous match from the 1900s in Chicago, and it was like a 13-hour match between George Hackenschmidt and whoever he beat. So I know he won because he was the winner, but like, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the pure athletic. These guys went for 13 hours, and I'm sure there were some people that were sitting there pumping their fists the entire time, but most pro wrestling matches on TV go about three minutes. <laughs> My wife hates board games, but there was a big caveat. I love board games. I enjoy playing board games. But then we found a cooperative board game, and suddenly she really likes this board game and wants to play it. And she's smart and critical-minded. I would think the kind of person who would like board games, but she has straight up said, well, I don't want to make someone else lose. I don't want someone <laughs> else to like, be in pain, especially if it's my husband or my child and like, ha, 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 I beat you. And so going back to this whole competitiveness, I would definitely say there are people who don't feel the need or feel competitive. I don't think she's lying. I don't think she has a political agenda when she, when she says those things. But I also would say that I have definitely met people, maybe even myself, who do have a competitive sense, a healthy competitive nature. I have three kids. My oldest is uh, going to be 18 here very shortly. I have a brag, I brag, because we only have two each. Come on, fine. <laughs> 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 but none of them are very competitive in anything, right? And, you know, we've signed them up for all kinds of activities. And, you know, my wife is not complaining necessarily, but but we, we have said, like, they just don't seem to, to want to compete very badly, which I also get. Because I said to my wife, like, I wasn't competitive about anything in my life until... We started improvising and I was trying to like <laughs> get on, trying to get that team to win or trying to get audition for things. And it was one of those things where 
I think there is, of course, there's such a thing as healthy competition. But again, you get to, I guess, this desire, right? Competitiveness for pure competitiveness. I'm sure we all know uh, somebody like that you've shared a room with where you're like, okay, this guy just wants to say one more than than the 12 that I've said or whatever. And then there's uh, the other kind that it's like, well, I yeah, I want to be reputed. I want to improve and I want to make things better. So I'm not sure uh, if that makes me boorish, but there, here I am. <laughs> Sometimes I ask Mark if the ancients have anything to say about competitiveness, the ancient philosophers. You know that word thigh the chicken thigh add a mos on it how do you pronounce that it's a greek word uh add a thumos not thymos oh. actually the actually ancient greece doesn't have vowels so it's just like it's just scholar bullshit but if you see that word thymos it's thumos it's the competitive the honor the warrior part of the soul so this is you know looking at plato in the republic famously you know you got your repetitive part of the soul you got your thumos so the eros and the thumos and then the reasoning part and and there there's I'll think of the Greek one for that in, in a minute. Logos. Yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, you beat me to that. This is what happened when I pick a topic extemporaneously. And Plato, like most philosophers, is like, I mean, in fact, in one one of the dialogues he gives, the other two are horses, and then the logos is the chariot, and you got to keep those bastards in line. You got to use them because if you just had reason, like you just. There'd be no reason to do anything. I don't know. That's sort of a different topic, whether reason itself can attract you to the good or compel you to do anything. But definitely a lot of what, if we look at human drives or something, you might think it's it's all the, the cool stuff that we do. Art is just those savage things that are being tamed. And so Thumos is sort of the, the black sheep of the family in terms of philosophical history, because, you know, sort of the id versus the superego, you know, there, you've got some version of the uncontrolled part and then the hopefully controlling part. But then what about this Thumos as a separate thing, honor bound? It's not just being a savage. It's not just toxic. In fact, it might be, you know, your desires would pull you to, I don't know, be selfish in a sort of narrow way, whereas honor or this fighting spirit seems to make us do things that are not in our self-interest and are, you know, it, it creates a different kind of irrationality than merely being a slave of your stomach or your, your balls or whatever. There is definitely competitiveness and honor are definitely linked in, in some regards. And we love the all-star player who makes that pass. But they, they're winning the game. You know, they're, they're doing it to serve the team, which is ultimately a competitive event. I can see that. Can you see it to such clarity that you can start an improv scene that, well, yes, in some way involves... I would think aggression and competitiveness is probably not a hard thing to bring into any scene. But if we have something to say about those through the magic of pretend. I swear, I thought you were going to say the magic of philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Philosophy is not magic. Zach, I know we've certainly improvised a ton together and, and apart. And just, I think, grow apart. I think we just, we just, our lives just took different avenues, right? Yeah. I didn't mean to say grow apart like there was, yeah, right. It, there was no like a qualifying event that I was like, <laughs> I'm done with Bill <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I identify as chaotic good, you're lawful evil. Yeah. But that's it. There, no real rules with, the, with these improv scenes other than just enjoy yourself and have fun. And I think over the last year, Mark has gotten very good at being more subtle at the philosophy angles and not just, you know, we're cactuses we're talking about the philosophy topic. We can be people, right, Mark? Now, I also, it's kind of funny, I did write down a little improv challenge here, which is actually quite fun and kind of interesting. And uh, Zach, would you mind starting an improv scene just verbally, just very a slice of life? All right, well, I cleared the table and loaded the dishwasher. I'm going to get going if that's all right. Awesome. No, no, thanks for doing that, dude. Awesome. Okay, we're getting stuff yep. done. We're getting stuff done. We are. Yeah, I, I appreciate you hosting, but uh, I... I Really got to get going. I think we, we made a lot of good uh, progress today. No, oh, this was great. This was great. This was great. I think everybody, all the guests had a great time. And thanks for sticking around and, and doing, helping out with the dishes. That's none. That was, that was above and beyond. That was really above and beyond. And let me just say, I'm not, I didn't see any checkbooks come out tonight. But however, you know, metaphorically, perhaps some pockets were loosened and we can get some investors happening. Hey guys, before before you go, uh, Zach, uh, did you get a did you get a flyer for the competition later? Uh, I'm sorry, did you you're still here? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was giving flyers to everybody else. I, I kind of, you, you noticed me throughout the whole evening carrying a, a sheaf of papers. I cleared a bunch off the table. I didn't realize they were yours. My apologies. Do you want me to pull them out of the trash? It's a small competition, but I think you're really going to dig it. It's so theatrical. It's so just like over the top. Okay. Well, you know, you know actually, um, you know, Zach and I had, we're trying to get some investors for our uh, uh, restaurant business here. And that's why we sponsored this dinner and uh, had everybody try out some of the food or be doing. And are you a plus one or are you, <laughs> did we, are you on the uh, investor list? I don't, I'm into networking. I, I'm, I like to do the, uh, the connecting with the peoples. I, I, yeah, you came, I came with, with uh, Yeah, all right. Uh, sh- she had to to go, but you know, if you want to hook up with Stacy later, and I don't mean that in the literal sense, I mean just to, to, you know to be in the same place with her because I'm very respectful of that. I mean, she said there's a good chance she would try to show up. It's Tuesday at a. Uh, I don't go on till one a.m., but uh, you know, there's there's other stuff before us. Some of it involves you know straight wrestling. Uh, you know, ours is kind of the, the extreme. It's only for the real. But I, I gotta say, it's it's really good for entry folks like you too. It's uh, well, just can I just can I just want to say real fast here. We kind of put this marketing little thing to get this dinner together, and you're kind of kind of horning in. <laughs> I, hate, I hate to say that a little bit, but this this was kind of our audience, our captive audience. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like wrestling, and I think that the deathmatch stuff is not really my thing. It's a little too much gore for for me. Uh, I appreciate. Uh, I might come and check out the uh, straight wrestling, as you put it. But really, we were just trying to test out some of the things we've created together in this kitchen and, and see if we could, um, if we have anything. There's different kinds of wrestling and different kinds of sort of multi martial art kind of things. I'm sort of more into the psionics. I'm the, the fighting cactus. I'm going to be going against. Hey, you know uh, what? If you have some of those flyers, we'll just look over them. We'll just yeah, look over yeah. those flyers. That's, That's great. perfect. That's perfect. You got to heard of Billy the Gator, right? Uh, I knew him when he was Bill Gateman. But all that said, uh, also, you know, we'll absolutely take the flyers. If you have any feedback on our take on jalapeno poppers or our special ranch, any of that stuff, we'd, we'd, we'd welcome if you're going to be here. I've got feedback. I mean. Oh, great. Perfect. I've gone to so many of these kinds of events. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's poppers. Sometimes it's more. I don't know. Did these poppers really pop? I asked myself. I think they did. I think you guys did a really great job. I mean, it's no, it's no Big Louie's. That's kind of their thing. I mean, that's that's jalapeno poppers is their, is their thing. But I appreciate the feedback. We, we've decided to not use frozen poppers, but actually make them, uh, you know, make them ourselves in house. And I, and uh, but I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. I mean, have you thought of of sort of getting a, a beef going with Big Louie's? Uh, you know, with that particular point that you're you're stressing, like ah, oh, they're using frozen. I know they're well known for that, but they're more of a sports bar kind of a thing. We're going for more fast casual, but uh, they're definitely a, a brand leader. Um, your ride. Has Stacy left? Are you? I'm just gonna get an Uber or something when I'm done here. But you know, I got a I got a big stack of flyers still, so I might hit a couple more of these events before uh, before things go down. Well, don't let us. Uh... Oh, you don't let us keep you. Yeah, don't let us keep you. You don't want to hear more more feedback. I got I got feedback. I mean, yeah, if you got it, I'd, I'd little, sure. If you have feedback, the little quiche things. Yeah, what were those? What do you call those? Quiche tickles. Amazing. Really? They're no big big Johnnies. I mean, big Johnnies that does the quiche de gol. Well, quiche de gol is our Yeah. I mean, if they're doing a quiche de gol, I really need to write this stuff down and mail it to myself in a letter. So it's... Perhaps they are doing a mini quiche, but, yes, but right. not a quiche de gol. Yeah. Well, that's great. I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad well, you liked it. They'll, they'll soon be doing it because I'm heading there after here and I was going to suggest uh, quiche de gol Friday now because I, I really like that name. You guys are so creative. I really applaud so what you. What makes our quiche tickles precious, though, is that the crust goes all the way around. It's a ball of quiche. That's why it's a quiche tickle. <sighs> yeah, and and I like how you'd put just two of them next to each other. I mean, it seems it seems uh, you know borderline. Well, that was just not, for the not offensive. It's just that was a tasting just, portion. That was a tasting portion. Okay, at a restaurant, we would never uh, serve two with the uh, carrot sticks. That's that was just for a tasting portion for for y'all. That'd be gross. But thanks for the feedback. And that's great. I mean, I, I so the, the food was great. The presentation, I mean, when you were like holding up the quichicles and kind of doing that licky thing and like, hey, you like, you like. I thought that was a bit much. You're kind of overstating what happened, I, I think. Uh, I'm just Greek enough to get real pigeon English at points. And I apologize. But I think that's again, that's the, it's the, the demographic we're going for. And I think that's great. I mean, I think, I, I think. Why are you here, I, man? <laughs> Why are you still here? Dude. Why are you still here, bro? 
I just I, I feel like I haven't got a firm enough commitment about coming on Tuesday. No, you have not. I, got I could firm. connect you with so many good people. I mean, if you if you're up there with your fighting cactus signs, you know, I'm even available for endorsements. D- dude, I think it's time to go. I think you've overstayed your welcome. I think it's time to go. Here, let me just show you on my phone pictures of the costume. No, you it, you've overstayed. It's time to go. It's time to go. I'll call you an Uber. How about that? Oh, really? Okay. Can I take a couple uh keychickles to go? You can take the entire bag. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's gross, gross. <laughs> what happened to oh, that? Guy? Stop right there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was gross. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't come up with that name, that disgusting name. Uh, no, but uh, uh, well, it could have been quiche popsicles. Ah, uh, uh, with, uh, well. without the T, <laughs> quichicles. See, that's too hard to say without the break. You're yeah, right. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll roll back the tape and they'll say that we can cut out that syllable. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy, may I have a popsicle? Well, I tell you what, certainly I think that competitiveness, we've all been in situations where someone's like rubbing us the wrong way or just overstaying their welcome or something. And like, even my wife would say that, you know, and is that not, is that different from competitiveness? Is, you know, at, at what point does that anger or frustration, you mentioned this utopian world where we're able to just, logic out all of our differences what if someone's being a jerk what if someone's you know do we have to sit there and take it or have to explain to them why they should leave let's stop for some sponsor talk i have two quick stories for you first last mother's day i wanted to make a home-cooked meal for my wife i found a veggie paella recipe online i went to the grocery store specifically to get ingredients for this they didn't have quite everything i had to substitute Anyway, I'm in the grocery store for really quite a long time for what's going to be one meal. The recipe is a little ambiguous. I end up screwing up something about exactly what stage to cook the rice in. I'm trying to follow the recipe on my phone and it tries to put a paywall in front of me. So I have to go get it off my computer and print it out. Overall, it came out okay. And I have leftovers that I don't really want. Second story, I received a box from HelloFresh that includes three chef-selected recipes. I've chosen the veggie category, and they all look good. The ingredients are pre-portioned. The instructions are colorful and clear. And without fuss of any sort, I make the sweet potato and pepper quesadillas, which go over very well. There are 40 weekly recipes to choose from, and you can choose from over 100 items to round out the order from snacks and easy lunches to desserts and pantry necessities. Everything arrives in one box on a delivery day of your choice. So a great cooking experience, even for someone like me who's not that great at cooking. It's at least 25% cheaper than takeout. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Improv 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Improv 16 and use that code Improv 16 for 16 delicious free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Also, what's the real science behind all the popular UFO claims on television? What's the true history behind today's growing beliefs in Atlantis, the Flat Earth Theory, and Ancient Aliens? And when you take away the media hype, what do scientists really say about COVID-19 and global warming? Since 2006, the Skeptoid podcast has been revealing the true science, true history, and true facts behind more than 800 of our most popular urban legends and mysteries. Each episode of Skeptoid looks at a famous story you know and reveals the part of it you haven't heard. Check out episodes covering mysteries such as popular ghost stories, famous UFO cases, alternative science claims, cryptids and urban legends, or conspiracy theories. Find out why the truth behind these popular legends is even more interesting. Listen wherever you get your podcast. Just search for Skeptoid, that's S-K-E-P-T-O-I-D, or visit Skeptoid.com for full transcriptions of the entire catalog. Yeah, I mean, what do you guys think? Like, does competitiveness, real competitiveness, the kind that maybe fulfills a human need, does that have to have some sort of structure? I don't know. Yeah, I would. I just watched a bunch of Rocky movies for a different uh, podcast. And in some cases, it's like, you, oh, you're my respected competitor. And in some cases, yeah, we're doing this thing, but we're doing it for different reasons. And I hate you. I think you don't deserve your fame. And maybe, you know, I guess it's that thing in wrestling. Well, what have you found, Zach? I, I always assume they're engaged in a in a mutual, a mutually supportive activity, just like two improvers. But they're manufacturing the competitiveness as part of the fun. Yes. And uh, beyond that, if you have someone to say, like, let's say, for example, I beat Bill in a contest of professional wrestling. And I say, Bill sucks. I can't believe I had to face Bill. He sucks. Then who have I beaten if I, if I just beat him and I told you he's terrible? The line is like, 
the earnest like, oh, you've delivered me this opponent. I'm not even sure I can beat him. And when you do, you could say, well, it took everything I had and he's a worthy competitor, but now we can see who's best, you know, but if I keep saying, you know, <laughs> I can beat anybody and you keep bringing me this crap, you know, I guess there's two sides of it because you want to see that person get beat. But I was going to say, could that be the villain? Could that be the, yeah, the heel? It, it's certainly a fine line. And there, there are people who do it way better than way better than the examples that I'm giving them, giving right now. But, um, <laughs> But at least that's a, whatever your attitude, it's a, it's within a framework. And so we understand what competitiveness is. Bill's asking like, what about just regular aggression? Like that people, it seems like want to use if they are a boxer or whatever they bring out in, in wrestling, they bring out in whatever their thing is, their aggression, then, well, maybe that's like the only time they do it. And they're just perfectly nice of the rest of the time. But at least so goes the trope. They're probably assholes to someone who, you know, cuts them off on the street as well. Just being irritated by people and taking that to some level i don't know is that have anything to do with competitiveness or is that just simply something to be uh banished from the world well just taking a step outside of it for a second because the way you said it the first way like that caveman need like mm-hmm. i would guess that caveman need comes from like okay so let's say for example there's a contest one or whatever a food provided but it's food provided so like maybe at its basis need if i if i kill a bear and i eat the bear p- the people around me can eat the scraps if i don't give them permission to share with me but i think ultimately like again at its basis you want to be associated with a winner for the spoils of the win or to be with the spoils of the win right so if i'm merely competitive and dominating for the sake of that i would imagine and and not sharing in, in those spoils in any way i would imagine the people encircled around me are going to just back away and find something else to do unless it was absolutely no other food <laughs> except for scraps <laughs> you, you know what i mean like they're probably going to get the idea and say all right well that guy can go skate we'll figure this out together or whatever you know so i would imagine if the base part of it is is a, a metronome or an ebb and flow there's got to be some sort of like medium to yeah i'm competitive for the sake of being competitive but i have to have some redeeming quality for me to be included in society however small that society might be that happens with uh, at pro athletes, you know, football players. We we love them on the field when they're tearing down and, and knocking into people. But the second they start knocking into people off the field, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. how do we? Yeah, we created a monster. <laughs> create a monster. Exactly. Yeah. Do we still appreciate them? Do we still draw on those lines? For sure. We don't want them being nice on the football field. We don't want them being merciful. But it sounds like as long as the victor shares the victory with the spectators, then it's okay. That you know, as long as you give part of the meat from your your victim, you've just uh, been really rude to someone in the street. You give everybody else around you high fives. Like, yeah, we did it. We did it. Certainly with sports and certainly with you know, improv and I can imagine with wrestling that there is a like everyone who is agreeing to compete and agrees to a set of ground rules and agrees to this is what it is. If there's any stakes involved or whatnot, that's all agreed upon and, enter- and entered into with an understanding that it is not life or death and that we're going to be in a scene together and I might yell at you like I did, Mark, but I'm yelling at you to serve the scene, to serve this person who's just this total helicopter guy who's not leaving when he's not taking a hint. You know, that's my character yelling at your character. You know, that's my wrestler punching your wrestler in the gut. That's my linebacker leveling your quarterback. But we understand that in the rules of an improv scene, that is not necessarily us. I'll try to remember that tonight as I'm (laughs) reflecting on all the hurtful things you just said to me. Why are you still here, man? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. In the podcast, Mark. Why are you still in on the podcast? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) We got to figure out what Bill's lesson is. It's easy. It's a very basic improv lesson. Will it have something to do with the way that you responded to Zach at first? Yes, it did. Yes, that's why I needed Zach to start. So he started and then you answered with a strong emotion. I feel like we'd just done that and a different lesson. So it must have been a different lesson than that. Well, it's it's a similar one. It's a similar one, but we can we can do another scene and talk about it. I just liked how it took you guys a while to figure out together what you were doing. Is it a party? Is it a business meeting? Oh, it's a biz, it's a business meeting party. It took a few go-rounds. Welcome to Improv Mark. Stock and trade. Stock and trade. Thanks for sticking around and helping <laughs> wash the dishes at the event that you organized. You know, th- these things that Bill has assured me that people will forget about those early things that when the people on the stage can't make sense of it, the audience hasn't tried yet either. And nothing will stick into their heads until a certain point. I pay attention. I pay attention more than the other three students that are okay. I can't compete with anybody. I'm sorry. I'm curious about in the professional wrestling world, when you have beefs like offstage beefs, 
and I know there are some famous stories of people getting legitimately hurt or or not. What is at the center of like if that's a point where certainly a line has been crossed, we can all agree that it's gone from some kind of healthy competition to unhealthy competition. I mean, is usually there- it's it's real personal. The ones that I not necessarily even have, have witnessed, but like a guy by the name of Robert Anthony that wrestles as egotistical, fantastico. He's with um, the National Wrestling Alliance right now and has been on on WWE television and, and on AEW as well. He had a podcast about like backstage fights and like the most compelling ones were like somebody got with or tried to get with or successfully <laughs> got with somebody else's girl. And it's, <laughs> I mean, they're really no different than a lot of other relationships. Sure. The more famous Big time ones have to do with like somebody not doing what they're told. And then in that moment, either like somebody go, okay, and bringing the wrestling into the professional wrestling or at the behest of a promoter, they put them in with somebody who's reputable as someone who can definitely take care of themselves. So, I mean, I guess it's not interesting to talk about wrestlers dominating or beating up fans because it happens, right? But, uh, and it it should, right? You you should uh, believe that that person is is tough. But like, you know, there was a guy named Luthez who kind of like took uh, wrestling out of this like George Hackenschmidt 1900s era into the television wrestling in the 40s who couldn't be beat unless he just made up his mind that it was one of those things where like it kind of got exposed and then they had this champion who you had to really talk into losing because he could legitimately not lose to anybody. And there's people out there like that. And of course, like there's one in his book about he was in India and this guy kept dragging his face across the ropes, but they were like actual like <laughs> twisted yeah, ropes. Yeah, yeah, yeah like- right. And not like, you know, the cables they are today. And he's like, it was just cut me and cut me. So I picked him up and dropped him on his head and he couldn't move anymore. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, that's one way to solve that problem. Uh, yeah. the, he's like, the guy couldn't understand me to say stop. So I shut him up or I stopped him the way I knew how to tie the two together. The good improv doesn't look like it's made up because you want it to look like it, we're not like trying to figure it out over an extended period of time. But ultimately, like it's a business like everything else. You want somebody to buy a ticket next week to see it's all new, it's all different, but you want them to come see the show again, right? You still want to be the theater's lights to stay on, if nothing else, right? Wrestling is the same way. If it gets stale or boring or you don't believe it, you just want you want to work together enough to get somebody to come back and buy a ticket the next time because they're both businesses. On this show, you know, we have the guests on and they help us, but I do feel like more of a competition. So I just want to take time out and uh, say hi to, hey, Zach's wife. I, I imagine you're pretty hot. What, why don't you give me a call? All right, now we've created a little beef for the rest of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that fight. I would love that fight. <laughs> I don't have much going for me, so I fight dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I think you you got some you've got some athleticism, Zach, that I think is beliled by but you, you know what I'm saying. I, I like using the devil's name for that word. Yeah. Do use that. Yeah, I think you know some technique. I think you've got technique over Mark. I know I've said this before, Mark, but I think sometimes we need to be careful that we don't dehumanize ourselves too much. At the end of the day, we're an animal. I'm not saying we should excuse Will Smith for popping Chris Rock, but like how many times a day is one man in the world punched for making fun of another man's wife? Globally. You know, it's like, uh, uh, that probably happened. Where are the stats? <laughs> There's the stats on that. It's like, it happened to be on television. And it happened to be involved celebrities. But otherwise, I'm saying it's pretty mundane. Now, maybe not a punch, but certainly a shove or a yell. You know, it's like, and I'm not saying it's right or good, but like, is it evil? Is it how dare you? Is it a felony? To be human, you know, to do those things. And I think, you know, as much as we might not like football or think it's aggressive, I I don't think it's everybody's entering into it in a fair way and it's being adjudicated fairly. And if it's entertaining, I'm not sure if it's felonious, you know, I'm kind of surprised, Bill. So you're you're usually the evolutionary psychology guy who comes. okay, (laughs) and, and, you know, that, of course, competitiveness, you could say, actually, it's not a it's not a human need. It's like these other things like the sex drive. It was selected for by evolution, right? C- competition for everything, mates. resources, that's, mates, that's it. food, caves. and so yes, exactly. So the fact that we needed it at some point to survive says nothing about its utility now, and it's just like this evolutionary vestige that we have to deal with. Is that the same vestige that you walk by a line and people are like, I don't know, I just got in line because I saw these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I, I don't want to miss out on something. Like I need to get that. I need to get what's mine. I just feel like it's, we were talking about reason earlier, and I feel like there's a lot of really thin reasons out there, reasoners, the thin, reasonable people out there. Let's go just briefly back to what Mark was saying. Like, if you were legitimately to hit on my wife, 
she and I would exchange a glance. And I don't mean this, you, Mark. I just mean if someone did, I'd be like, all right, bud. Because we would all find some, somebody, I mean, the two of us would find some humor in it and definitely talk about it later. <laughs> like, you know, there's, of course, we're not in the era where you might throw her over your shoulder and just leave. So that might be a different story, but like my wife might object to that, but you know, as long as I share the spoils with her, as long as I, you know, she gets the thigh most. <laughs> I'm just trying to say like, you know, when the stakes are where they are, right. The stakes are this. The stakes are more toward the biceps. Okay. Go on. Yeah. When the S T A K E S are potential embarrassment, that's a lot different than like, well, I'm going to have to kill this guy now because we have to compete for this wife. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I should have more closely studied Squid Game as like a modern, <laughs> a modern, like, I guess Running Man would be more in my field house or wheelhouse, rather. We're going to talk about like modern games of uh, competition and kill or whatever that are fictionalized, but, you know, not that so far out of the realm of possibility, if you will. I know with my kids, they're not into competitive sports. My son can be a little competitive when it comes to games, and he understands winning, and he understands really creaming somebody, and he, under, he appreciates the difference, and doesn't feel bad if you really cream somebody in a board game or something. And I think that's fine, but I think sometimes, especially in, in improv scenarios, if you have someone who is conflict-averse, they can end up, I'm not saying every time, maybe I'm being a little controversial here, but sometimes people who are conflict-averse end up playing characters with no dignity, with no self-respect. And sometimes the yes-and spirit can be taken to mean be a pushover. Yes. Okay, so just jumping back to my example of there are the three of us in a party, my wife is there, and Mark hits on my wife, and we're like, okay, but you know, to the 20 other people in the room, I might be seen as some sort of pushover. I would never let someone speak to my wife in that manner. But also, like, just just make the accent a little more fancy. <laughs> I would yeah. never. <laughs> I'd never let anybody talk to you about like that, Barb. You know, like <laughs> that kind of Chicago royalty. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but again, like to your point, Bill, if we're improvising this scene, what's interesting to the audience to watch? Me take a swing at Mark? Probably a lot more interesting than like, <laughs> okay, bud, my wife and I are going to go home and have a good laugh about this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. You know, the stakes in reality and the stakes in improv are, are vastly different. But also, like, again, we're talking about, like, wanting somebody to come back and buy a ticket to see us again. So we would probably get into a shouting match or I would make a big show of taking my shirt off and throwing it on the ground like I was really <laughs> going to do something. And that could perhaps embarrass yourself even more if you take your shirt and get, <laughs> yeah. get all angry. It's like, oh, my, no, please. And then I, you know, break wind and fall down or something. <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got me so excited I'm going to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> all these personalities the conflict averse person the the irrationally competitive person suggest perhaps those are two easy answers to uh what we could do in the next improv scene sure now uh, take it to the next level the extreme stuff the psionic i will over our little chat function here i'll send zach what it is that i was doing and then mark can try to guess Right. This is, totally, this is exactly what it is. And I kind of, this whole, I actually had it written down before you mentioned competitiveness. And I thought, oh, well, this is actually quite fun. You can definitely see how this could have some, some things going on. Are we ready? Everybody ready, Mark? I'm more ready than, than Zach. Well, the, the damn dog got out. You're I, kidding me. Yeah. Again? Yeah, again. Again. He's probably, I don't know if he's in the neighbor, jumped over the neighbor's fence again or dug under across the street. I don't know. I also don't know. And you know what? At this point, I don't care to find out. Okay. Have, you, have you guys you guys see my dog? Oh, you know what? Boy. As far as we know, he got out, and that's as far as we know. He's not. He ain't in the house. How about that? He's, that's where he's it was not start. answering. The back door was pushed open. Actually, did you lock the back door, Mark? Maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't remember what I do, dude. That, that how many that, times? I mean, that dog's already got two strikes with animal control. Okay. I mean, at this point. We can't save you from yourself any longer. I might have locked the door. The dog might have figured out how to open it anyway. Well, I think you need to go look for your dog. Take your pajamas off. You, just bedtime can wait. You can go naked. Oh, but yes. Bedtime can wait. You could put your clothes back on and go look for him. Because you know what? We're over it. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're finished. We're done. We're finished. Is there a note somewhere? Yes. And it says yes. ARF. It says yeah. ARF. Yeah. Okay, Mark. It says ARF. Right. It says ARF. Yeah. I hope that, that's your lead. That's your hot lead. You know, it's good to, you don't want to just be rash and just run into things. It's, it's good to think things through carefully. I, you know, it's a natural dogs. They like to explore 
It's like they have natural needs. What is this oh. guy? Art, Art Conan Doyle over here? Fine. Yeah. Then let's let's follow let's follow the money and see uh, what lured the dog outside. Yeah. My guess, my guess is it's the dog in heat that's three three blocks away. The same thing. It's been every time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, honey, we got a real uh, zoologist up in here. A little co- yeah, detective. I mean, clearly not enough of a detective that you you know not looking at the the parts. Like he's been neutered. I mean, if there's, I guess if there is an interest in the dog that's in heat, it is a purely uh, an interest of a spectator. Gross. First of all, <laughs> um, I don't know where you pick that up from. What kind of locker room talk you've been having? He's not in any physical shape to participate in in any uh, any mating activities. Is what I'm saying. Has anybody told him? Just saying. Just saying, Hercule. Hmm. Like it's not like he's humps legs. Right? Have you ever seen him up a leg? Okay, why are we standing here when your dog has left the house again at 8.30 at night? Let's grab the flashlight. I'll tell you what, I'll even stand on the street. I'll even stand on the street to try to keep some eyes on you. How about that? Isn't that I'm nice? I'm going to stay here and make sure Sports Center doesn't go off the air. I just figure, all right, well, so because the home phone is on his tag, and it, it just seems to happen like, you know, we'll get a call in about a half an hour from the Dairy Queen. Or something that you know the dog will be. It's a fast. Is this the boy we raised? Dog. Is this the boy we raised to just let to just let it go and not it might pursue? Be the boy you raised. Okay, you know what? I, yeah. After mm-hmm. I was laid off, we decided as a team that I would raise the kids. Okay, that was a team decision. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, if it were the shoe were on the other foot, and I was the one at home all day, my guess is he'd be out there with two flashlights and four friends. Oh wow! Well, okay, well I we would, go- we would goonies this dog back for that. Oh, okay. Uh, you know what? Uh, I think maybe if you, we don't know. We don't know if that would be true. We we don't know if that would be true. Okay, and we got to play the cards we're, we're dealt with right now. Okay, and sure, you'd be a better stay at home parent. Good, I grant you that, <laughs> dear. Mm. I just when when I picked the dog based on cuteness, you as the adults should have been. You know, known something or looked up something about fox terriers and how goddamn fast they are. They're so fast. I every time I go out and I try to chase him down, it's just I can't I can't catch him. I just I just give up. I don't. You know, he's he'll come back. They always call. You want to know a secret? So, Most yeah. of the things I do, I picked on cuteness, and you can see where it's led me. Um. Ouch. And thank you. You <laughs> not quite sure how to. Okay, you know what? I think you do need to go look for your dog, Mark, so Jerry and I can figure this out. We have some things to figure out, too. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some That's, cute, cute things. So, something else has ran out the door, perhaps several years ago. Uh, no goal of coming back, all right? And uh, I think <sighs> this might be a discussion we need to have, all right? All right, I'm going to bring the, the steaks. Is that all right? To sort of lure them? L- yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please, take the steaks off the table. Yeah. Take, the, take our dinner. Take our dinner off the table to go find. I mean, just dog. one of them is fine. I'll just take mine. <laughs> it's, it's, if you bring more steaks, if you bring more, does the scent go farther? You, you know about physics. <sighs> the, the wafting. I wish you would, I, I wish you would just care. I wish you would care and see this. I'm talking to the talk to some boy. I'm talking to the boy. Okay. Okay. Good. Cause guess what? I care about those steaks. I, I'm talking about the dog. I wish you would care about the dog, care about the dog, enough to feel that he is responsible and that he should go fight for that dog and go get it and not wait for it to knock over a dumpster at the DQ and then get called out of shame and for him to, to take some ownership and some dignity, dare I say? I said the same thing as you. I said the same thing as you. I said, well, no, I, you get your butt back into your clothes and go find that dog. I said the same thing as you did. I, I didn't say you didn't. I didn't say you didn't. I'm agreeing with you. Maybe 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 I agree. I agree with you at the start of this conversation. Well, the, well, the, but I was agreeing before we even before we even decided to agree. I was agreeing. Fine. I knew. I tacitly understood that we would that we would agree. Of course. Hmm. All right. Well. Since, since you guys didn't know, I've now I've gathered all the steaks from the table. I took the extra steaks from the fridge, and I've got a very very high amount of steaks for the maximum scent wafting distance. And I am, I'm, I'm out. All right, I won't come back. I won't come back empty-handed, even after to, to give these steaks to every dog I see to ask them if they've seen Reggie. Wait, son, there aren't dog informants. You can't give a dog the equivalent of a twenty-dollar bill and get them to give you a little information. It, it just won't work that way. Just 
get your clothes on, take one stake if you're dying to, and walk the path you did when you had find him the previous four or six times or whatever it's been. Because he got out again. All right. Uh, <laughs> what about, should we add the peeps? The, the peeps? He- I think we should add less chit chat and more closing putting on him and yeah. going to find the dog. Where's your drive? Where's your oomph? Where's your gusto? All right. Well, I might eat some of the peeps on the way, but I don't think they're going to add significantly to this to the stink distance. So, uh, yeah, I've got to this investigation. Would you say you're going to be really surprised at how effective I'm going to be at this? I'm going to be out there until uh, you call me on my cell phone and tell me that they've called and somebody has seen his tag and tells where it is. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to be wandering around in the night. With, only if with the, only if what happens the exact same thing as every other time. You're right. All right. If I'm uh, if I'm kidnapped or something, I'll I'll maybe I won't see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Did you ah. change clothes yet, young man? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we'll stop there. We'll stop there. That was fun. It was enjoyable. It was ridiculous. <laughs> we built a little world, Mark. We built a little world. We built some people. And it took a while again there. I didn't realize I was your children for quite a long time. I thought I was the neighbor. You were saying something about the neighbor's dog, and or again, nobody remembers. <laughs> Until you figure it out. And it's not that people don't remember. It's that it exists in this kind of amorphous world. And then once it crystallizes, any crystallized anything is more memorable than an amorphous thing. Yeah. The other things kind of fall off, right? Yeah. They just, they kind of, other potential candidate scenes that clearly don't exist anymore are completely forgotten. Yeah. And I did have a fox terrier who would run away and never come back. And they would have to call us multiple times from the Dairy Queen. <laughs> they got in the dumpster or something. And yeah. No, it's like they let the, they just wandering around outside. They let the dog in. They would give oh. us some, uh, some ice cream and they would just, call, they would just call. That'd be kind of funny to like, give that dog a bunch of ice cream and send it home. as like a time bomb. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> the dog's like, oh, <laughs> I did not think about that. that those yeah. repercussions. You leave your dog in the house overnight. Yeah, you're allowed to stay in the house. Great. <laughs> we didn't feed up ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so how was the competitiveness? You had some interesting dynamics evolving between the two of you. It was a, a yeah. to witness. Did you think that was competitive, Mark? Right. We've talked about competition within a structure. We've talked about what about just like road rage, kind of stranger, <laughs> just a general assholedom. But what about the intimate competition? You know, not just the... Uh, I don't know if this is, uh, there's competitiveness. Uh, hopefully there's not too much competitiveness in a, in a marriage. Actually, I was in New York City. We saw Funny Girl, the famous musical, which has a, is weirdly, you know, it's from the 60s, I guess. I don't remember when it was put on originally, but it's not, it's not new. And it has some weird gender dynamic stuff in which the husband just can't stand the wife being more successful than he is. And that like ruins their marriage. Spoiler Sorry. Yeah. But I just that's wonder what, if that's if that's even a thing anymore. But there's always little little things. It's just I don't know, usually somebody is the person who is just whatever, I'll just apologize for whatever and 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 maybe that is underlyingly it maybe it's passive aggressive or something. But uh, yeah. I don't know. I always tell my kids you got to kick you got to pick your battles. And mm-hmm. you know, I think there's probably a, a breaking point for most people, especially when you're intimate with someone and, and think you can trust them or you think you you have an understanding and that understanding goes awry. Guys, I apologize. I have a hard stop at two. I didn't, I, uh, ah, no worries. Since it's right in the middle of the day, I, I didn't, uh, well, this is the, this is the moment. This is Your the hard moment. stop <laughs> has driven us to, you get to decide right now. What will bill, would you complete the explanation of your, of your, uh, uh matching energies, of, matching, uh, matching, matching energies. Energy. Does, it was actually like a fine job and a fair job of mm. demonstrating that matching energies does not mean necessarily acquiescing. And in order to be bickering parents, we're going to match those energies, but we're not necessarily going to roll over for each other. I thought that was a, an amazing example. That was really fun, too. And, and knowing what it was, it gave me a little tip. But I will say it works a lot better when we can both have a point of view and aim it at you, Mark. Mm-hmm. That could have been a, a very passable scene of us just like bickering with the same energy, but different points of view. But oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, once we had like a... Oh, here's the kid whose dog went out. We we you know we really both were able to pounce on it. Yeah, and Bill has coached me in ways that my character probably just would have left <laughs> pretty quickly. <laughs> There's no reason that I would still be there. But yeah, we want the scene to go on. So yes, all right. Yes. <laughs> For-
you're pushed to the limit, to the breaking point. You must decide right now before you have to jump off. Was philosophy or improvisation with those two, I won't say lessons, but like the activities, the journeys themselves. Which journey was more rewarding today? Which one will shake you to your core as you go forward? Wow, that's tough. I mean, honestly, like I'll say improv just because like um, I am... Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh! He left! He left! Classic. Oh, man. Wow. Well, Bill, in the absence of our guest, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Oh boy. I'm sure he's, I can hear his belly laugh right now. Uh, wow. Wow. All right. Well, one mark for the improv <laughs> and, and no awkwardness. No, somebody that knows when to leave. They don't just hang around telling you about their cactus. I didn't even get to explain what psionic wrestling amounted to. I was shouted out. That's fine. That's fine. I didn't get to put on the cactus outfit. You, you, you end up leaving a lot on the field. I think the cactus, what it, was it, Captain? <laughs> the cactus wrestler will be an enduring character. Uh, yes. Show, yes. That's what I'd. <laughs> an object of worship. Well, uh, I'll take the victory. And I enjoyed uh, improvising and learning from you, Mark. Well, I enjoyed improvising and learning from you, Bill. And Zach. And scene. Scene. I hope you enjoyed the show. To learn more about philosophy versus improv, go to philosophyimprov.com. Make sure you're subscribed directly to the philosophy versus improv podcast feed, even if you're listening to this somewhere else. Or better yet, use one of our supporter feeds, which you can learn about at philosophyimprov.com slash support. Listening that way will remove all the ads, give you post-game chatting with me and Bill and usually our guests for nearly every episode, supporter-exclusive bonus discussions, and if you support us through patreon.com slash philosophy improv, you'll see links from most of our recent episodes to the unedited video experience, which is objectively better than just listening. Thanks! Maybe I